Glenn Van Zutphen on Saturday mornings with Neil Humphreys on Money FM 89.3. Welcome back to Saturday morning here on Money FM 89.3, uh, 1042 on a beautiful Saturday morning. So far, the weather is holding up for us. Looks like it's going to be a good day. No rain forecast. Get outside, get some exercise, get some fresh, clean air, and uh, maybe have some family time on top of it. Speaking of which, we uh, have been in staycation land for the past year and a half and seacation land for not quite a year yet, but we are going to talk about that right now. Joining us on the show is our longtime friend, Michael Go, president of Dream Cruises, the head of international sales for Genting Cruise Line. Of course, the World Dream is um, is one of the two cruise ships going out of Singapore for seacations. How you doing, Michael? Great to see you again. Good morning, Neil and Glenn. Uh, good to talk again. Yeah, and are you on board right now, or are you at, on, on land? I wish I'm on board, but I'm, I, I'm at home. <laughs> okay, Michael, how many of the Seacation cruises have you done on the World Dream? Can you even count how many it's been over the past almost year? No, I, I, I would like to go as often as possible, yeah. uh, but the response is so good that uh, I got to give up my cabin, actually, to our guests. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's start with that first. What? Uh, where are you at right now with the response? First of all, how many folks can you now have on board, and and what's your uh, take up rate looking like? Now we're now back to fifty percent, so we can take close to one thousand seven hundred uh, passenger, mm -hmm. uh, and our guests are allowed uh, to dine in the restaurants uh, if they're vaccinated, and then up to like five percent uh, per per groups. So the, the programs on board, actually, that, this allow us to organize a lot of activity on board for our guests. Yeah. And you've been one of the great, as I've said before, one of the great success stories of COVID in terms of tourism, F&B, and how you've adapted. And we'll get to that. But one of the things that I do find genuinely fascinating is how you have brought the world to you. We can't go to the world, so you bring the world to the cruise ship with your markets of the world uh, concept and uh, again fascinating yeah, initiative right you know, know. improvising coming up tell us about that tell us about your markets of the world now i think first before i go into that uh in fact uh today uh we are actually now enter into our 126 sailing and oh. we carry about 155,000 passengers so far just singapore alone wow Fantastic. Wow. Yeah, and then we Fantastic. all know that uh, I think Singaporeans love to travel and we can't go anywhere. So we said, we bring the word to you. So for the last uh, many months, uh, we have been like bringing the uh, Korea, Thailand, and presently Japan. And then uh, September onward, uh, middle of September onward, uh, we are into the market of the world. Uh, so, so I think in the past, like example now, when you go up into the world dream, uh, you got to see the famous uh, lavender fuel uh, light in Hokkaido. I saw uh, that. Tori I saw Gate. that. Yeah, <laughs> Tori Gate uh, uh, from Kyoto, uh, and and many, 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 many more, right? But I think what I, I think September, October is really going to be really exciting for us because we're going to bring uh, the world market actually to the ship. So uh, if you come on board cruising again uh, in uh, September, October, uh, you really get to uh, uh, kind of taste the uh, tapas actually from Spain, pleasure from Germany, mm. uh, crepes actually from France, and many of the Asian delicacies actually, desserts and on board the ship. Now it's going kind of like a carnival, and so we we organize many kinds of like game activities for family, for kids, and for me, many adults actually they got to kind of like uh, bring back their childhood memories because some of right. these activities we do are uh, uh, the the kind of like vintage uh, games and all this. Right. We're talking with Michael Go, the president of Dream Cruises. Michael, it's such a great idea since, you know, you cannot do any port calls mm. uh, yourselves or Royal Caribbean, who are also, as we know, running uh, seacations. It can't do the port calls, but you can bring a little slice of some other place uh, on board. And I know that, uh, you know, our family has done the cruise twice and Neil's been on with his family. The staff are really, in my opinion, what set 
that experience apart. Everyone is so helpful and professional and nice, uh, you know, when we were on board. Um, you know, you guys have really done an amazing job of cultivating that customer-focused, customer-service attitude on board. Has that been a challenge to maintain that level of, of care and concern for the passengers over so many months when, you know, people are frankly a bit stressed about COVID-19 after 19 months? No, I think when customers come on board the ship, uh, they, they want to have good experience. Mm. And I think this has been the service culture of Dream Cruises. Uh, we've always called ourselves Asia at Heart, International in Spirit. We have the warm Asian hospitality. Uh, we bring the inter international element actually for our cruises experience. So there's something's been, uh, uh, our staff understand this culture. And uh, they are, in fact, very grateful uh, that they have a job at this yeah. really very, very difficult time. And you can see that uh, they all really serve the guests with their heart and they and they, they gain many uh, kind of applause and compliments from our guests. You know, at, at one point, we said uh, Singaporeans are kind of quite stingy in giving compliments, right? But uh, it is not true because I think the amount of uh, compliments that we receive from our cruiser is unbelievable, mm. yeah. either mm. through email, uh, through all the communication platforms. So, so, so we're, we're yeah. happy and we'll continue to cultivate this, this culture. I no, think that's a good well, point, well, actually. Oh, I was going to say, I think that's a good point that you both make, um, Michael, that uh, when I was on the cruise, that was two things that stood out. One, the impeccable service that uh, Glenn mentioned already. And, and two, that gratitude that they're sailing and they have jobs. If they're not sailing, they don't have jobs. So it's one of the few jobs, particularly in the service industry, that I've come across where the staff are almost as happy as the customers <laughs> because the ship is sailing. They've got jobs. As long as we're on board, they've got something to do. So it was felt like a real win-win situation, Michael, you know? Yeah, this is actually very important kind of like to take pride in the job, uh, be different, uh, be creative. I think, uh, uh, I think we have to kind of give the stories uh, and experience to our cruiser. So like when we actually talked about October sailing beside like bringing the market of the world, because I think in October, there are also the two very famous uh, kind of like, uh, uh, like the October fairs, and as well, you are talking about Halloween. So uh, we also will bring in uh, many of these actually programs actually on board the ship. So if you come again in October, you, you really see that uh, you really have, have good time. Michael, um, the, um, the, the COVID scare, the, the COVID concern that we're all concerned about, um, you know, popped up a couple of months or a month and a half ago with the KTV cluster uh, that came out and, and very swiftly uh, you were all able to contain and make sure there was no spread. Uh, this was another element of the cruise that I saw firsthand, which was this attention to um, strict uh, COVID regulations and guidelines, and not to mention the fact that you've got an entire medical suite uh, that is ready if there should be any kind of uh, a passenger with any health problems or even COVID problems. How did you feel about that whole incident and how your team, your staff responded to that? No, I, I think uh, firstly, the COVID uh, has actually kind of like bring down the cruise industry uh, when it actually started. So uh, when we were the first cruise line in the world to restart the business, uh, one of the key objectives we want is we want to demonstrate uh, to the world cruising is still very safe. Mm -hmm. uh, it is important that uh, we are all ready to take on uh, should any of the incidents that actually happen on board the ship. It's about the readiness. Uh, it's about the uh, corporations that we work with the authority. Uh, take Singapore, for example, the Singapore Tourism Board, uh, the ministries of health and the various ministries. Uh, they are so engaged and they are, they are always kind of provide the guideline. And uh, with our expertise in the cruise operation, we were able to come up with uh, a really a very good uh, protocol and procedure. So, so, I mean, the last incident, there was, a, there was a positive case on board the ship, but we wanted to demonstrate to the cruiser mm. 
that when something happens, you are in good hand uh, and uh, you are being looked after and you are fully aware uh, what the cruise line is doing. And in yeah. fact, uh, uh, that turned out to be good because I think the consumers convinced. And we were we have very few cancellation uh, when the business remained to be very positive. So that's something that we we feel as as a cruise line uh, we need to do. I was I, yeah. I was on the next weekend cruise, Michael, the one after. <laughs> mm. I was on it, if you remember. Mm. And as I said on air to Glenn before, you know, and I'm not saying this because you're here. I felt genuinely safer on the ship yeah. than I did on the mainland. Mm. because of the testing and the protocols in place, which I thought was extraordinary. If you'd have said to me 18 months ago that I would feel safer on a cruise ship than on mainland Singapore, mm. I wouldn't believe it. And mm. on that point, it's because, as we said, you've adapted your business model, you've adapted your safety protocols step by step in the last 18 months. Yeah. You know, for businesses listening, for, for CEOs listening, what lessons have you learned about adapting through COVID that you could pass on to other businesses? Now, Dre, uh, I think we, we definitely have to adopt very quickly. I, I think for this, right, I actually looking at your different front. I think first it's about managing a uh, consumer. I think first we definitely have to gain confidence to consumers about the, the brands. And then secondly, uh, about the operating procedures uh, and we got to be very clear, we got to be always being updated, we always got to com uh, communicate in the international community uh, to implement new things that, that, uh, that address various challenges. And with that, I think more importantly, uh, when customers come on board the ship, they, they do not know, they, they, they do not need to know what to do, but it's important that we know what to do and assure them that they are, they are in good hands. Mm -hmm. So that actually explained that uh, why uh, through the last one and a half years, we have now like 155,000 passengers just Singapore alone. And beside that, we started our cruise operation uh, in Hong Kong as well. And then uh, uh, very soon, we're going to restart again in Taiwan. So the Dream Cruise is most like the first cruise line in the world that with all our ships actually back into operations. Uh, it's fantastic. And, and we it's such a... A phenomenal COVID success story. I can't wait to see how your cruises even evolve even after COVID has gone away. I'm sure you must have learned many interesting lessons. And next time we talk to you, we'll maybe hear some more about those. In the meantime, good luck on your Markets of the World uh, themes, uh, activities starting on September the 19th to November the 6th. Uh, looking forward to seeing how that goes for you. And as always, thanks for being with us on the show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing your up to cruise again. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm ready right now. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Thank Thanks, you, Michael. Really, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's such a great idea that like bring the experiences, bring the world to to people on the cruise ship. Well, I mean, right. Oktoberfest. They're yeah. bringing Oktoberfest to the ship. <laughs> I mean, I'm a little bit concerned, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> if the ship starts swaying <laughs> from side <More>. to side <laughs> yeah. when it's at anchor.